غيرك يا رحمن يا علام اللهم صل على محمد يا علام اللهم إني أفتتح الثناء اللهم صل على محمد How's everyone feeling? Alhamdulillah. How is the Ramazan been so far? Alhamdulillah. Oh, it's about Ramazan, honest. If it's about me, don't. <laughs> yeah, comments about God, Ramazan, be as honest as you want. It's so tiring. In what sense? The fasting or taking care of lack of sleep. Yeah, yeah that is tiring. Uh, others, how are you? How's Ramazan been? Overwhelming. Overwhelming. In what sense? There's, there's too much going on. Mm. Do you want us to cancel this? Oh, I'm so glad. No, but I get you. It it could be overwhelming. I was joking on the arms. Yeah, overwhelming. It is overwhelming. And I think maybe that's one thing which is good to talk about tonight. What is that one thing that can bring all of these things into one? So by the end of it, we know what we're doing. Because Ramazan sometimes could be like breakfast buffets at hotels. You know, by the end of it, a lot, if especially the when I was a little bit naive and didn't have the experience, I would really oppress my stomach. I would see the eggs and I was like, of course, I have to take some. Then you said the halal sausage. I was like, where else do we get this in the UK? Mm -hmm. And then, oh, jelly. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Maybe don't have all the shakshuk here. They have to smoke salmon. Why not? <laughs> Cheddar cheese. <laughs> By the end of it, my stomach was like, Habibi, what are you doing to yourself? Putting all of this. Well, sometimes I feel like the month of Ramazan, our soul could feel like that. You shove a little bit of like this door on top, a little bit of that, this lecture, that lecture. So what is that one thing that brings that harmony or unity? I think it's very good to talk about. Um, yes. Others, how are, how, how are they finding Ramazan or how are they feeling right now? Yeah. So a little bit like your breakfast buffet, sort of trying a bit of everything, but somehow not feeling satisfied. And then thinking, oh no, what did I do wrong? I've, you know, I paid for the bread, bed and breakfast. I'm here, yeah. doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but yet I'm not feeling content, and I'm not feeling that. Yes, there's a sense of peace, but not the type of peace that I'd expect from halal sausages, as well as the smoked salmon and the eggs and the cheddar cheese. And I also remember these smoked croissants. <laughs> I didn't notice the croissants in hotels are so tiny. It's yeah, so that one is what you're saying. So you, you're going through all of that, but the sense of peace you're expecting is not coming. Mm. And that closeness to Allah, that sort of being sort of at one with Allah, at sort of you know having that um, you know where Allah is enough and that's all I need, and I feel this sort of you know the light and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Which is a very good point. Very good point. Yeah, inshallah, 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 we'll come to this. Thank you so much for sharing. Anyone else would like to share things with us? Or yes, feeling guilty. Guilty. Feeling enough. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly like me. I'm like, we've paid so much for this breakfast. 
if you don't eat, like you have to, so, so the guilt I get you, it's like we're coming to Ramazan once in a year, once the next time we're coming to Ramazan, so the guilt is there. I get you, the guilt is there. Have I done enough? Have I read enough? Am I there? Absolutely. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. What, what else is, is anyone would like to, to share or? Yeah. We're afraid that it may finish quickly. Absolutely. And I haven't done Ahsanto, which is maybe a Ahsanto, like what if it finishes and I haven't done what? Well, it's interesting. I don't know. God put this example of breakfast buffet in our mind because it answers all of this. Because <laughs> another challenge with breakfast buffets, you know, it's what my son, they say it ends at 10 a.m. sometimes. <laughs> In, when you go to a hotel, who wants to wake up at 10 a.m.? Like, usually if I'm on a holiday, I'm like, this is my only chance to get some sleep. But they make you wake up 7 to 10, and you're like, I need to make sure before this ends. Um, subhanallah, I think this is maybe actually a good place to begin Joshan Kabir as well. What is, by the way, the strategy you came up with to solve the breakfast buffet problem? Let's benefit from your experience, then I'll care as well what strategy I came up with. What was... Are you allowed to have a takeaway box? Sorry? Are you allowed to have a takeaway box? Depends on how good you can hide it. <laughs> ah, Santo. Oh, maybe try a different thing every time. One thing at a time. That's a great strategy. Uh, anyone else has some strategies for? <laughs> Arrive at seven and pace yourself. Make sure you don't promise lunch anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you if you if you miss it, don't worry. We'll always look tomorrow. Ah, Santo, that's a good one. Ah, Santo, tomorrow as well. The hotel would be there, inshallah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry? Book multiple nights. Ah, Santo. Ah, Santo. Tomorrow and day after. It's like it's not the end of the world. There's hotels existing in the world tomorrow. And you know, this is like sounds really simple, though, but I don't, for myself, to be honest with you, it took me so long to learn that. Because I love quite a few things for breakfast. I don't know what's your favorite. I love my croissants with my coffee. That has to be there. Even now, my iftar is only. Coffee and these kuluche zahra makes at home because uh, it's healthy, it doesn't have sugar or not, it's made with date. Now my iftar is kuluche and coffee. It's like a kind of cookie. So that's how much I love coffee and this. So for my breakfast time, I need to have my coffee and croissant. But the problem was like, oh, this has to be there. But then what do we do with this cheddar cheese? <laughs> what do we do with all of these other things? But at some point I realized I'm not really enjoying when I'm putting all of this as much as if I just tell this soul, happy be star, let us just enjoy croissant and coffee. And the rest of those beautiful things, shall another opportunity, maybe for lunch, maybe for dinner, maybe one day we'll go out for dessert, maybe we'll have that. And it was so difficult for me. Like I'm saying, maybe it took me 10 years to get to a place where I could see all of that in front of me I'd be like, I'll get more joy and no guilt afterwards if I just have my coffee and croissant. And maybe while Zahra goes to pick something, have a little bit of her granola as well. <laughs> but that's because it's not from my plate. No one knows. <laughs> the calories don't count. And now I feel like I needed to trust somehow that I will be okay. You know, before that, I really felt like, what if we're not going to be okay? And this, as silly as it is, it, it's not an easy thing that you can trust that, no, I will be fine. You know, I wouldn't be filled with regret. The same applies to the month of Ramadan and in our relationship with God as well. Okay. Is a simple breakfast with God enough or do I need to keep filling my soul and 
the same trust that I think we built there, all of those of us who have, and no judgment if you still want to go for it, it doesn't matter. Look with the body, what's the worst that happens? Worst comes to worst, your stomach is like, Habibi, I'm not happy. So what? Deal with it. <laughs> but with your soul, you don't want to be doing that. With your soul, you want to, because this, this stomach, at some point, we're going to put it in the grave and go again. You know? Although we should take care of it, poor thing. But it's not the end of the world. This soul, on the other hand, is who we are. We can't treat our soul the way we treat our stomach, you know? And if we manage to really trust God, trust that even one moment of God is enough for our soul, can change really our whole um, life the next year, then I think we'll have a very different experience. Um now, my question is this, what is it that we're not trusting that makes us feel like I need to do so much to have a good Ramazan? Is it that we're not trusting that to all oh, that I feel like I need a million lines of it? Is it that we don't trust God? Is it that I don't know myself? What is it? I think it's a combination of all of this. It's a combination that I have never maybe tried something else, so I don't know how I would feel afterwards. My son, I have never tried on a night of Qadr, my son, and someone may say, on the night of Qadr, instead of giving a list to God, say, God, you know more what's best for me, and you love me more. Instead of me giving you a whole list tonight, I want to trust you. You choose the best for me. It seems very scary, especially when someone next to you maybe pray, hey, you're not praying for your rest, I'm going to pray for my next car, for my company, for, and I'll pray for that. And then, oh, maybe I should do it too. It's exactly like in that breakfast, you see someone next to you is going and taking all of the fruits on his plate. So like, maybe I should go and do it as well. Not knowing that, Baba, you're happy. Only nothing will happen in the world if you don't have your grapes and melons right after you have your croissant. But when you see another person do that, you're like, what if I should do it too? What if God wouldn't choose the best thing for me? What if I need to tell him? But one thing we don't know is that in this act, in this simple act of let's just in case say it, I have told my heart and my heart and soul, you don't trust God. And God says it was in that trust that was the most precious thing you can take away from the month of Ramazan. So if you do everything, but at the cost of damaging your trust with God, you haven't gained the most precious thing in the month of Ramazan. Because the, the main thing on offer in Ramazan is this, God will take care of you. God will do everything. So if my effort to make the most out of my Ramazan decreases my trust in God, it's almost defeating the purpose of Ramazan. Ramazan was meant to be a month in which God says, I've got you. Sit down. In fact, I want you to know how much I've got you. Kassan, you want sabab? Your breath is about. You want sabab? If you, your sleep is about that, this is how, and in this month, if you want Sabbath, I'll give it to you as I'm for sleeping. Now, more comfy here about that. Your sleeping is so that is okay. Forget about doing something. As I give you brownie points for breathing and sleeping because this month is about something else. What is this month about? Because this month is about you finally realizing I'm there with you. I'm there with you, and I'm enough for you. And maybe with this spirit, now we can enter into some reflections on Dua Joshan Kabir. Dua Joshan Kabir is one of those, it's, you can really think of it as a breakfast buffet. You can go read 1,000, 1,001 names of God, 
come out of it and all your soul is telling you, oh, we ate so much. I need to go to gym. I need to lose weight. Yeah. Your soul is like, what did it happen? Although you feel a little bit of joy, yeah? just like when you're eating so much, you feel joy. So Joshan Kevin, it could either be that or you enter into it and be like, what is that one thing through this God wants to teach me this time? How does he want to change my life this time? Or let's make it more accurate. How does he want to enter into my heart? So when you are reading the lines of Joshan Kabir, the way an open soul, a smart soul would treat it is like, imagine you're in that hotel, you're going across these different things which are on offer. You go through the cooked food options, you're going through them, and you're witnessing all of this till you see which one your heart says, this is the one I can have right now. So another, for example, just to make this less theoretical and more practical, let's read some of these lines which are there so I can explain with an example what I'm talking about. So now we're reading Joshan Kabir. Just think of each phrase as something you're witnessing till your soul tells you which one I want to put onto my plate, which one I want to focus on tonight. That's my gift from God. That's my rest tonight from God. We're reading, for example, Ya Rafa'at Darajat. You're the one who elevates people's rank. You're the one who can take me closer to you. Ya Alim al Khafiyat. You're the one who knows even what is hidden in my heart. Ya Khaira Zakirin. You're the most, the way you remember is the most beautiful. So, Alan, we just passed three dishes. We passed one breakfast dish, Ya Rafa'at Darajat. We passed a dish of Ya Alim Al Khafiyat and Ya Khayr Al Zakirin. Now, let's see who or which type of soul right now would pick up this dish. Masan, let's go with which one, Ya Rafa'at Darajat. We have a soul who's entered into the month of Ramadan with so much intention to get close to God. God, I really need you in my life. I want to be close to you. I want to have a very high level next to you. This soul, when he reaches Ya Rafa'at Darajat, God is the one who elevates people, can put some of this food on their plate and reflect on it. If I want to have a very high status next to God, if I want to, well, for each person I'm high status next to God, they say it in their own mind. As someone who's read a lot of self-help books, like, I want to really self-actualize. That's their high level. Another person who's read spiritual books, oh, I want to reach enlightenment. Another person who must have read the du'as, I want to love God. I want to be the word ahl Each person in their own way know that there is a higher place they can be at. And they've tried so much to get there, but if they're honest with themselves, they just, oh, there's still so much to go. When that person, when they reach this dish in Joshan Kabir, they put it as a... Eh. I thought I should go towards enlightenment, towards closeness to God, towards self-actualization, towards whatever. God says, he will take us there. Your Rafa Darajat means what? God says, I'm the one who will keep you, taking you higher and higher. As if I came into this month of Ramadan, I thought I should do it. He says, I'll do it for you. So this person can enjoy this dish. This one dish itself can change their life. As long as you want to go towards enlightenment, oh, wait and see when you get there. But if you allow God to take you, you're almost like a lift that takes you all the way to the end. The example is this. Imagine you want to go to the top of a very high building. If you want to go on your own, it's like you're not waiting for the lift. You want to run to the stairs. And hello, go up the stairs. If you want to go 200 floors, wait until see how you get there. After the 20th floor, yeah, your legs are tied up, you know. You may fall, you may have... Although, okay, in this world, ascent, the stairs um, don't go all the way up anymore. I mean, there's not stairs enough to take us that high. But then God says, oh, why do you want to take the stairs and run towards me? There is a lift. If you just wait enough, the lift will come. You get inside the lift, the lift will take you high. 
and then you go high and you see all of these poor things beautiful that they're running up are you going up the stairs the lift will take you up and you tell them oh, come join the lift why are you making yourself tired as you are off at that ajat if you want to get high allow me to do it for you there's a lift the lift taking everyone up why do you want to do it yourself the ones who got anywhere ask the ones who really got somewhere if you ask them how did you get there so someone gave it to me there's not a single person in the world who managed to get there on their own. Even the ones who are now, some of the people who now want to teach us how to get there. If you ask them, did you follow this prescription? He says, no, they gave it to me. That's why are you telling me a different prescription? But it sells books to the poor things they don't know. Either they're not thinking, I think most of the times it's not that people are evil. Or they've been deceived themselves as well about what they're teaching. Because hope, they got there, they didn't know him, but there's a reality who takes everyone there. But like, oh, I'm here, past. maybe I know how to take others. No, but no one knows. No one can take us there. God says, I'm doing it. If anyone came to you and says, let me show you the way there, and it didn't include God will take you there, it's not me, they don't know what they're talking about. So this is one dish in there. What was the another dish? Well, let's say, you don't care about any of this. You've just got so much pain in your heart that no one knows about. You go to the next food, Ya Alam al Khafiyat. God says, baby, I know the things inside your heart that even your partner doesn't know. You're shy to even share with your family, with your children. All of us have even some insecurity, some stuff that we don't want anyone to know. I said, I know it. Uh, I can take care of you. You don't even need to mention it. But sometimes with some of us, we even feel what's wrong Forget about my partner not doing what's wrong with me. Even I sometimes don't know what's wrong with me. You know, one of the reasons why they say if you're talking to someone, don't give them solution if they say I'm unwell, is because, Baba, you don't know what problem they need solution to. Some people need to speak for half an hour, one hour. They tell you 10 things that's wrong. And then by the end of it, they realize that this nine thing, I don't care about it. It's that thing at the end. And it's some people, they need to talk till they figure out what's wrong with them. Allah, God says, beautiful soul, your partner doesn't know what's wrong with you. Sometimes even you don't know what's wrong with you. But I know. Ya alim al I know, and if you find me, I can take care of you. There's so many other things that I removed from you, so much pain you didn't know you had. I removed it. And these ones, can you feel it? If we're together, I'll remove it for you. Ya alim al this itself could be a dish I put on my plate and a whole night of God, I just enjoy this. Not this dish, let's go to another dish. Maybe someone this month felt, God, I need you in my life. I felt you before in some period in my life, and I don't know, maybe it was in my house, maybe it was after my child was born, maybe in a difficulty. You came to me and you showed me what a life with you looks like. I want to remember you. I miss you. <clears throat> you know, I don't think many of us here have felt, even if someone hasn't felt, it's okay. And everyone will feel. Prophet guarantees. Everyone will feel that moment, the first time in which you feel God's presence in your life. Although I would say everyone's felt it. Or maybe you didn't know that was God you were enjoying. You know, any time... Any time ever we thought, could we were actually remembering God? Any time anyone showed us love, any time anyone showed us appreciation, any time we ever felt seen. You know, being seen is something many of us were really lacking and we're not because we're adults, we can't say that. And adults, I don't know, for some reason, we're so awful at seeing each other. <laughs> you have to make it a little bit sad or you have to scratch the person's heart. Oh, good job there. It could be better. You know, see this person. You know how much effort they put into that? The moment you say it could be better, it's like you take a knife, you're stabbing their heart. Most people, most of us, were waiting for a moment someone really looks at us, everything about us. So, but sometimes when someone sees you, they see you in a way that they're telling you there's parts of you I don't want to see. And then someone says, okay, are they? Your business ideas are great. I say it means you're a terrible father. You're an, you're, 
پس بابا این order to see one part of me you told me ten parts of me you don't want to see ten parts of me you hate خب of course I'm flawed but can someone see me as flawed as I am and all of me not just part of me and appreciate all of it خب God says I can do that خیر و زاکرین even those moments where your mom was giving that because moms are the best but well, not just it's only mom or mom. some prophet was like a mom some dads are more like that but for many people it was through their mom or a grandmother who, who they received this at least at some point in their life that someone who sees them whatever there is and loves it i remember once i had done hijama and uh, i was very young but someone told me it's good I was like, okay, let me go do it. I don't know. I was like 16 years old. <laughs> and afterwards, I came home. Apparently, the guy had done it very strongly. So my back, it was the, you know, the wound cut. I was going to go take a shower. My brother saw that. He wouldn't let go. I was like, oh, you look disgusting. What is this? Ah! Started going around the house. Maybe I was even younger because that makes Reza 19. I don't think Reza would do that at 19. <laughs> yeah, I was younger and he must have been younger. So he run around the house. Javad looks disgusting. Ew! <laughs> you know that meme? Brother, ew! <laughs> it's literally in our house. Reza said, brother, ew! I looked at it in the mirror and I was like, he's not exaggerating. <laughs> Look, trying to look in there I was like oh my god it looks awful I got scared of myself well, imagine if something disgusting is on your hand hope you remove it but if it's on your back and it's your own body what do you want to do about it I'm running in the house trying to escape from my back but this back was coming with me my mom sees me and Reza says mom look Javad's back is disgusting you know what my mom said it looks like a painting to me she had the eyes to see me that I didn't have myself. And she loved something about me that I hated about myself. Oh, look, God says, this I, you know who gave her? I gave it to her. The I that a mother has that can see things about us that we hate and she loves it. God says, that's me. How does he say that? Ya khayrat zakir. This, I can remember you. I can be with you in a way that is the most beautiful. So that one is still nothing compared to the way I can see you. You thought you're coming here to remember me? I'm remembering you first. And I'm remembering you so unconditionally, uh, so beautifully. Uh, even those things, if Masalan, your mom couldn't see, I can't see. I will love it. Ramazan, the whole point of it is to feel this even if for one moment with God. If that day I was running around the house till my mom said, Javad, it's a painting to me. And I, she said it so genuinely that I felt it and I sat down and I calmed down. God says, baby, all of you, the whole year you're running around. In Ramazan, let me see you for one moment so you can sit down. Your heart sits down. Your soul sits down. Then I will give you so much that then you can go and see others. And as long as I'm not calm, I can't see others fully. I'll ruin it. I will go say something that's not work. But God says, if I see you properly. David, I don't know if. This is something, mashallah, in some traditions, parents do it so beautifully, or aunts. I said, then, as part of the psychotherapy course we had with children, you had to go to different people's houses and see how they're treating their children. There was one thing some mothers do, and aunts and some generally people, which is so beautiful. This is so important for the well-being of a child. A few women, or sometimes other some men, sit around the child, and they keep seeing the child. Oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, you're so special. He said, and Mama, wow, look, he says, Mama. That's 
<laughs> whatever this child does for half an hour, one hour, these adults sit next to that child and say, that's perfect. That's beautiful. We love it. The child burps. Oh, wow. Burps. Okay, your stomach is feeling better now. So imagine the experience that child has for one hour, whatever she does, it's celebrated. I burp, they get happy. I talk, they get happy. I don't do anything, they're happy. I say the children really light up the whole space, they get. Hold on. God says in Ramazan, I'm going to do with that. Do that for you. Are you ready? My God, that's cringe. God says, Baba. Cringe, I know you love it. Maybe next to each other, we can say, that's cringe right now. Baba, in your heart, God says, I created you. You want it to. What do you think Joshan Kabir is? God says in Joshan Kabir, although there's no one around you to see you, says, Baba, do you become an adult? The gate's not easy for people to see you. There's a million things about you people see. They hate now. They know yourself. A dia alone seeing you is my job. It says, dia alone, you're not a one-year-old that everyone can appreciate. Because they're not as beautiful. Their eyes are not as beautiful as me. It says, add on. If I had my prophet next to you, he could see you like your mom. I mean, my prophet is not there, diga. These people around you, bless them. They, someone needs to see them. Diga, no one can give you the type of seeing you could receive as a child. Although, I hope one day someone like that comes. I'll, I'll create some people who come and see you like that. Our prophet was like that, though. An old person was talking to him about her pots, and he would just look at this. Tell me all about your pot. Two hours. So I'm talking about, yeah, yeah, I lost my pot at home, and this is the pot I usually use to cook my food. And it was, oh, tell me all about your pot. Just like that one-year-old child that is, she was my son, Thompson. The prophet would sit in front of an old lady, tell me all about your pot. Someone's finding it difficult to have a job. Tell me all about your job. So he would listen to people so much, they would call him an ear. And, look, God says, oh, Allah, and by the way, he says, you know that prophet, in order to become like that, you know what happened? What is, I put all of my love that I have for you inside this person's heart. In order for him to be able to receive that love, he went through so much difficulty himself. 40 years of pain. That's the prophet went through so much to be able to have a heart so vast that he can receive all of God's love so that he could come and see all of us. Now God says, well, I know my prophet is not with you to show me love, to make you feel okay. He taught you a dua. Joshan Kabir was taught by the prophet again. And prophet sent it and then from Imam Sajjad it reached us. Allah, oh, God, in this dua, what do you want to do? God says, I want to tell you who is there with you. Is this water mine? <laughs> Thank you so much. If it's okay, I'll have some of this water. I hope you don't mind. If you don't mind, I guess we'll put this back. Now, let's read some of these lines with this spirit. Okay, God is saying, sit in front of me. Let me tell you how much I care about you. And this time, something extra as well. Not only I'm seeing you, but let me tell you a little bit about myself as well. Eh, why about yourself? Because God wants this. I want to tell you that the one who's seeing you, the one who appreciates you, is not doing it because he needs anything from you. Napa was such a powerful person. Everything belongs to me. As if I see you and if I love you, you don't have any problem. So in Joshan Kabir, God does two things. Sometimes he tells us how much he sees us. And every now and then he says, by the way, by the way, by the way, the one who sees you is so awesome. So let's read some of these lines. Ya man huwa ala ibadihi rahim. God says, I'm the one that to my ibad, I'm very loving. As what is God saying? Let's try and for now, by the way, because you know God says, and God says, if anyone remembers me, I'm there with them. 
امام حسین که تکسی تو نکس لبوی سیز از تر داکر و من قبل داکر این اصلا بیفور انیوان ریمیمبرز یو یو ریمیمبر دن از الان افر ریمیمبرین گاد هو ستارت دید گاد پس الان این دیس ویری مومنت گاد از هیر ویر آس یعنی for a few seconds I want you to read if you want to send if you need to even close your eyes but just imagine the creator of universes I really love you Ya man huwa ala ibadihi rahim. This is him saying, I'm the one who loves you so much. Now, you know what he says? He knows some of us maybe like, oh, hey, God, me. The moment you want to receive God's love, shaitan starts. Oh, hey, you? Do you remember what you did Masala, three months ago? Do you know you hurt that person? So what does he say next? Ya man huwa be kulli shayin adil. Oh, I know everything. I know what you did. I know who you are. I know your shortcomings, but I still love you. You have a problem with that. You have a problem that I love you. I know everything about you, and still I love you so much. So, oh God, so I committed sins here. I've done, Ya man, over the man, I saw who Halim. You've, you've disobeyed me. You've done terrible thing. I'm patient. I don't mind. God, what is your patience like? And then you wait six years, then you destroy me. Imam Sajjad in Dua Abu Hamza Fawali says what? Alhamdulillah, alladhi yahlu mu'anni ka'anni la dhanbali. God says, do you want to know how much halim I am? How much patient I am with your sins? Imam Sajjad says, it's as if you never even sinned. From my perspective, oh, your sin is nothing here. You think that could stop me from loving you? It's like, I don't know if you've seen children when they eat food, a little bit of milk sometimes comes out. Imagine, hello, that child thought, because this milk came out, your mommy wouldn't love me. I was like, oh, that milk here, God says, you think your sin would impact me? Oh, you sin, you hurt yourself. Hello, this milk can, it's going to be on your face. It may make it itchy. Let me clean it for you. I don't want you to sin because it hurts you. Really you did. It doesn't impact me again. I'm God. I have that much help towards your mistakes. If I told you don't, it was not because of me. I didn't want you to suffer. Because this milk may come here. It gets dry. Then it becomes itchy. Then you can't do that. Because your sins to me are like that. It will make you itch. I don't like that. I don't want you to suffer. But from my point of view, Asan, because it hurts me that you think I would be upset because of your sin. You think that's how small I am? You think my love for you is that vulnerable? Alhamdulillah, alladhi yahlu mu'anni ka'ni la dhanbali. Allah, imagine how many of us on a night of Qalif, sitting in front of this God, go through one hour. God, I did that three months ago. Can you forgive me? He says, Baba, I sent before you. Said it, I forgive you. Just let me help you. Change your heart so you don't do it again. What was inside you lacking that you hurt your husband or hurt your wife? Or you ended up doing a mistake there? You felt jealous. Well, what did you need? Come to me. I'll give you so much. Did you wouldn't do that mistake again. This is what Ghafur means. As Astaghfirullah is what? Astaghfirullah is God. I did some stuff. Come and fill my gap. Sometimes I get insecure. Sometimes I get jealous. Sometimes I get scared. Sometimes I have temptations for things which are not mine. Oh, it means there's something lacking in me, Diga. Just come and feel that. That's Ghafur. And God says, who am I? Am I just Ghafur? says, no. Look at most places where God speaks about Ghafur. says, Ghafurun Rahim. Not only I will come and fix your issues, but I'll do it with love. Any, I'm not like a kind of masalam, parent who saw milk came out of you or you threw up and gets embarrassed and takes a tissue and does that. I'll do it so gently. Even when I want to heal your mistakes and shortcomings, I'll take a very soft napkin and with so much love, I'll clean your face. Rafurun Rahim. All right, yeah, there's so much there. I don't know, by the way, ke... What is our time? Because you take your time. 
because I, I don't want also this breakfast to become too long. <laughs> so maybe I think we can pause here and then see if anyone would like to share anything because it's good to keep it very... Uh, well, Alan, how are we feeling? Would anyone would like to share anything or... Yes, please. Not to 